Hello and welcome to the Cube Talk Show. Uh, my name is Joe Barbieri, I'm your host. And this is a show about money, how we interact with money in all very, in very different ways. Uh, this is a special edition of the show. We, we had a show last month about imagining the world without a concept of money. So we are continuing that show due to a, quite a few requests. So we have uh, Sandra Caracos uh, back in the studio. And uh, Sandra, how are you? I'm good, Joe. How are you? I'm good. So it's uh, Kurzakis. Oh, sorry. Forgot Kurzakis. the Z. That's okay. It's A to Z. <laughs> so, um, just as a pickup, if you can give me some background on yourself and on the concept, okay. and then we can continue on. Okay. Well, the whole idea, um, imagine the world without the concept of money. The um, key here, the word, the operative word here is, is concept. And the reason for that is because it's, the, it's not money that is the, the issue here. It's the concept that we have surrounding money. It's the idea that money creates um, classism and uh, egoism, basically. So it's the concept that money um, brings about in our society and that's that's what this is, this new system that we talked about last month and we're going to expand on today is all about it's called consciousness rising and it's about moving towards a consciousness based system um, in which money is exchanged but in a very very different way than it is today and uh, there are founding principles that um, uh, are the basis for this it's uh, for this movement and um, and that's what we're gonna I guess talk a little bit more about today yes so uh, off the top, mm -hmm. the first premise was give people what they need. Yes. I.e. give them enough money to cover basic needs. Right. Now, I get that to a level because there's enough food to go around. There are statistics that say there's 4% more food than what everybody needs. And if they just had it, a lot of issues would disappear. And on the money level, you can print as much as you like, which uh, the news is evident of. So. <laughs> Um, so taking that a bit further now, okay. so how would you uh, take that to the next level? Uh, well, as you say, Joe, um, there it's it's on a, a, a needs-based system, and not needs needs in terms of limitation. I just want to make that very very clear that it's not about limitation. It's about it's about ba the basic principle is basic needs equals basic rights. So everybody should have. As long as it exists, this is one of the founding principles, as long as it exists, it has the right not only to survive, but to thrive. So it's based on what I call an alive, thrive-based system. And alive stands for all life is valued equally. So as long as it exists, it has the right to, th to not just to survive, but to thrive. Now, to your point, there's enough food to go around for everybody. So why is there one starving person on this planet? There should not be. What is stopping it is the stop gaps that we have put in place, that man has put in place to limit the supply to certain people and certain groups and certain countries. And basically, we're saying, okay, man, hi the um, elitist corporations, governments, uh, you know, powers that be have have implemented systems that, that determine who gets the money, the, who gets the food, and how much they have to pay for it. And this is what I want to, this is what this system is all about, eradicating. It's about moving towards a, um, an abundance-based system as opposed to a, uh, a, a limitation, scarcity, and poverty-based system. So mm -hmm. to your point again, m there's enough food for everybody. So why isn't every single person on this, this, this planet um, fed? So it's based on that, fun, uh, on that principle alone. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how it first started. Okay. So now, so one of the questions was, doesn't this sound like Marxism? Communism, yeah. neo-Marxism, oh fascism, yeah. et cetera. Yeah, you how, know. So how would you differentiate? Well, I, I got, oh God, I, I, yeah, a lot of people have commented to me on that. It's, um, I, I, to be honest with you, I don't know a lot about communism. I don't know a lot about Marxism. I, I'm, I'm not a political science student. What I know is where we are now. And even to go back, I actually did a bit of research on communism and Marxism. And actually, I liked a lot of the quotes that um, uh, 
Marx had to, Karl Marx had to say, but, um, but I also saw so many different versions of what Marxism and communism were. Some were actually conflicting with each other. And I thought, okay, I, so depending on what people have read, that's going to, to, to change, to, to be their frame of reference for that term. And for me, to go backwards, to even think about what communism is and Marxism is actually take, is detracting us from where we are now. So what I would say is let's focus on where we are now. Forget about the past. Forget about trying to label it. Um, even if we did try to, we're in a different place in our history. We've evolved. We have, I would like to think, matured to a certain level. So even if we took that exact definition, it would, it's comparing apples to oranges. We're a different p people now. So you know, maybe that idea would have worked now. I don't know. All I know is what this idea is, is based on um, abundance and, and fairness and equality for everybody. It's based on harmony for everybody. And if that was what communism or Marxism or even democracy is all about, then good. But to be honest, it's irrelevant as to what that is. Let's start, let's look at new terms. And if we have to label it, let's label it something new. Let's create what that is instead of going back. God knows we've had enough problems going back. So why would, I, why would we even want to, you know? So, um, so that, you know, to that, to, to, to all those comments, maybe there are similarities. But what I would say is I'd rather talk about where we are and where we're going based on what we want to accomplish rather than where we were and why it's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather focus on my attention on, on moving forward in a positive fashion instead of coming, coming um, to me with problems, let's create solutions, right? And that's kind of the approach that I want to take. So um, as far as Marxism, there probably are some common grounds from what I saw, but it's really it's, let, let's move forward. Let's mm. talk about what we can do right now. It's a tendency of people to grab something they've seen and say, this is like that, but not, it's not necessarily. Well, the, the message I'm getting is it's not necessarily. This is completely new. It is. And, you know, if people need to do that, then that's fine. Um, if people need to understand that, but take your, rather than me trying to dispel what Marxism is, take what we're saying and try to fit that into your frame of reference. Adapt and change it to, to this, bring it forward. Instead of trying to bring this concept back, let's bring whatever idea you have of Marxism or communism or, or democracy and bring that forward to where we are now. So, uh, you know, rather than me having to try and figure out what that means for everybody, let everybody say, okay, this is what it means for me and how can this adapt, um, you know, to, to where we are now. That's what I would, uh, so if anybody has any questions or wants to email, then that's fine. Email me and, and, and with any questions as to, okay, so this is what I understand this to be. How does, how does it work in this, with, in this context? If, that, if that's what people need to do, then that's fine. Okay. So now, for the nuts and bolts, um, how would an exchange work well, between um, two? Okay, so people? that's that's one of the um, uh, one of the principles is that the the new money. Okay, would actually money would actually be nothing more than a current exchange. Notice the word current. Okay, currency. Okay. Current is the root word for the word currency. Okay, it's the current exchange, whether it is a paper exchange, what have you, it's a current exchange for daily um, products and services. It's, it's for that specific product or service that's there right then, right now, i.e. for food or for, for clothing, and then it's done. There is no residual, there is no debt, there is no interest, there's no um, after effect. So it's just the current exchange, hence the word currency. I really believe currency really came came about from that sense. Again, if you look at the real word, it means current. It doesn't mean after the fact. It doesn't mean you owe me something six months down the line. It doesn't mean you, know, you buy a house and you've got to pay interest and mortgage and all that stuff for 25 years. You know, it's just the actual transaction. Once that transaction is done, it's over. That's it. And in that way, nobody owes anything. Nobody owns anything. See, and that, that, that leads to a whole other kind of um, philosophy when we use money in that, in that sense. And that's taking away the concept. 
that we're talking about, the whole, that the whole show is, is based on. It t once, it's, if it's just a current exchange, if it's just, you know, you give me something for this pen and that's the end of it, okay, there is no concept attached to it. There's no hierarchy attached to it. There's no um, uh, uh, status yeah. attached to it because there's no profit to be made anymore. There will be no more profit to be made. And, and so, um, so that changes the entire concept surrounding what, you know, what we believe money to be. So, uh, well, from what I know about currency in the past, it was that way. So before paper, there was beads or, or, uh, or rocks or, or whatever. Or maybe even bartering. Sticks and bartering. They basically didn't save because they couldn't. The farm produced a thing, they sold the thing and it was done, and next year you produced a new thing. So that part I think is familiar. I guess the next part is the debt. Yeah. So that goes into the future. Yes. And so that part would be very different. Yes. Because it would all be in the present. Yes. That's, uh, yes. that's where this is going, right? And I think for the viewers, they might be thinking, well, okay, how do, how do we even start something like this? And, and I should have mentioned this off the top. Um, the whole idea of this, as we said, is, is you know that the currency is just the initial, uh, the current transaction. The way this would start, the way we could actually start to implement this system, is to abandon all money as we have it right now, as we know it. Any wherever money is, it's gone, it's done, it's dead, it's over, over. And what we would do instead is everybody would get a certain. Um, I, for lack of a better word, allowance, okay? Everybody is given the money that they need in order to live day to day. So it can come through electronically. You know, we, most of us have online bank accounts, okay? It could come through electronically or what have you, okay? And, and everybody would get a specific amount of money. Okay, if that is not enough, then they could get more it, it, because it's based on needs. It's not based on limitation, okay? It's based on what people need in order to live their life. So, so everybody would have a certain amount of money, okay, just for those daily transactions. No more rent, no more mortgage, no more payments, um, no more monthly payments, no more anything incurring expenses other than the day-to-day -day exchange, okay? So in that sense, there's no more profit to be made. Okay, so prices will come down because there's no more profit to be made. If you go and you buy an apple, there's no more markup because there's no more profit to be made because the owner doesn't need to make a profit anymore because that money, because they're out being given the same amount of money as everybody else is. Everybody's given a certain amount of money, right? And the same amount of money, okay? So, so now you've taken away any incentive to own or to um, acquire because there's nothing to be to acquire anymore. So as soon as that exchange is made, that is gone out the window. Because and that that exchange, other than the exchange actually happening, that money that was actually taken in is actually irrelevant now. It can go in the trash can for all of that, for all for all intents and purposes, because there, they, there's a new amount that's given every month. Okay, and to the other, um, uh, I guess. Uh, fundamental that I should mention here is uh, while everybody gets a certain amount of money every month, everybody gets the same amount. So there is no hierarchy in the system. Doctors don't make more than uh, a person who collects garbage, than you know, a reporter, than, you know, than the homeless person. Everybody is considered equal and that's when I say it's alive, this is the alive thrive based system. Alive meaning all life is valued equally. So nobody makes more than anybody else. So, and that's where ego comes in, okay, when, and that's the concept of money. When you bring in the concept of money and where people make more than others, now you start to create a class system. Now you start to create ego. I feel I'm better than you because I'm your boss. I feel I'm better than you because I'm a lawyer and I went to school for so many years and this person is a clerk who didn't get a chance to go to school. Not meaning they're not less, any less uh, intelligent, they just may not have had the opportunity. So everybody is created equal. So, so nobody makes more. Actually, nobody earns anything. Nobody earns a wage or a salary. Everybody is, it has access to the money they need to, um, to acquire the daily products and services that they need to carry out their life. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, you know, maybe I should have mentioned that off the top, but just so people understand, that's kind of the, um, the first stage of implementation that would actually happen. We basically say, okay, you know what, starting, you know, January 1st, 2012, okay? Money's gone, nobody earns anything, okay? Everybody gets a certain amount of money every month. 
we would determine what that is. And if, it de if it's determined that it's not enough, then we would give more. It's not about limiting people. And I really believe that if people, um, once people have everything they need, they won't try to get more because there's no, no more to be had. It's not like you're getting, the reason we want more is at the expense of somebody else because we feel we don't have enough. There's no more haves and no more have nots. That's gone. Everybody is a have equally. So, um, so we could, that would be the first step to implement, say January 1st, 2012, everybody, um, nobody makes a salary or earns a wage anymore, period, done. And everybody continues to go to work, everybody continues to do their job for now, okay, as this is the contribution they're making, okay, until we get all systems in place, until the dust has settled, then we will see how the changes, um, how this one step, we will see how the kinds of changes it creates and we will see patterns and we will see new needs opening up. Some jobs will become obsolete. And, and then those people will be able to move into opportunities where they can really explore who they are. And things, things will start to um, play themselves out. And we, this is a work in progress. This is not you know, a final solution. This is the first step. And then we would move and grow with that. For the people, by the people, no one person is deciding this. Uh -huh. This is a unity, collective, um, uh, group effort. So, uh, I just want to... So, um, I think you've answered this already, but... Okay. Uh, so, stage one is the allowance. Now, stage two, so... You're probably going to repeat some of this, but I'll ask okay. it anyway. So, what would stop somebody from being lazy? Or okay. being uh, unmotivated because, oh, well, I have everything I need, so I'll just bail out and just sort of exist and uh and you know what that's okay too if that means that we slow down production um that's okay the idea is that everybody you know to have this system everybody has to make a contribution everybody everybody most for the most part wants to make a contribution and i know a lot of people hate their jobs most people you know hate the jobs and and and, and have you know are so stressed by their jobs but um watch the dynamics change when, you st when, when all of a sudden the CEO is making the same amount of money as you. And we mentioned this a little bit in the show, in the first show, but um, watch the dynamics of the relationship change. Now you actually get to see people for who they really are. And now you actually get to work together collectively, not worrying about saying the right thing or did you screw up that meeting and now you're not going to get that performance appraisal and you're not going to get that raise that you wanted to get because all of that is gone. All of that is gone. So yeah, you are going to have people who are the haves, who've always been the haves, at the expense of the have-nots. And let's keep in mind, those haves are, you know, point 0.1. I don't even think it's like, I know we talk a lot about 99% and the 1%. I think it's 99.9% and 0.1%, quite frankly. But, um, so yes, you will, see, you will see some people who are going to, to resist the system. Those are the people that don't want, that are the haves and at the expense of the have-nots. And those are the people who are based in ego. So they're gonna show themselves up very quickly. And, um, but the majority are actually the have-nots. And I think, you know, for one out of 1,000, that one have out of the, you know, 999 um, have-nots will not likely try to exercise any power because they're outnumbered. Yes. So, so that's one thing, okay? Two. So yes, we would ask that people continue to do what they're doing because we still need to get the, the, the food in the grocery stores. We still need to get the garbage collected. We still need the kids to be taught. We still need the libraries to stay open. We still need um, you know, all the services. And I think most people are very responsible, especially Canadians, very responsible. Canadians have said years ago that they wouldn't, wouldn't mind paying more taxes if they really believed the taxes were going for the right reason. So Canadians are by and large not um, money grabbers. They want um, uh, in, in from what I know, they want um, health and wellness for everybody. So I believe most people will stay in their jobs. But for those who don't, you know what? If they feel like they've been suppressed and oppressed all this time, let them. That's okay. That, you know, a lot of us have been oppressed. A lot of us have been living completely stressed. People are going to be burnt out. They might say, you know what? I'm tired. I just want to stay home because I'm so burnt out. I don't, if I don't have to go, I, I need some mental health days here. Cool. No problem. Eventually, it is our inherent nature to, cre to create. It is not our inherent nature to just do nothing. Okay? Mm -hmm. So most of us will get back up and we'll say, okay, you know what? Now I want to do something. There's no doubt in my mind 
that that's going to happen. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, so, but, you know, there may be a period where people, you know, a long vacation. And that's, you know, there's no judgment here. Let's let that play itself out. If that happens, let's let, let that play itself out. But I believe it's still a great number of people are going to, st to continue to do what they're doing. And for those that may slack off, people whose jobs will become obsolete rather quickly, and there will be some of those positions who will die rather quickly, they might fill in the other positions. Hmm. Uh, it's go it will balance itself out. You know, the system hasn't worked with us trying to do it the way it is now, right? So we're trying to control everything, and we've screwed up pretty bad. So really, it can't hurt to try this. It's not going to cost us anything. Most people are going to live better than they have before. The very fact that you don't have to worry about paying your rent, you don't have to worry about feeding your family, is going to take off so much pressure. So is it, is it not worth to try that? If it's, I mean, if it's working for you now, if it's working for us now, then there's no reason to change. But obviously, it's not working. So what do we have to lose by trying this? I don't think a lot. If anything, we have so much to gain. So. Yeah. Um, okay. We'll take a break for a few minutes, and uh, we'll be back and continue. And uh, we'll be back soon. What? Oh, so Oh, <laughs> 
Okay, we're back on the Cube Talk Show uh, with Sandra Kurzakis. Kurzakis? Okay. <laughs> Thank we you, were, Joe. And we were talking about the uh, imagining a world without the concept of money. Now, I'll just put a comment out there about the haves and the have-nots because okay. uh, I've experienced this. So in a, in a workplace, you have the CEOs and the CIOs and the everybody else. But when you go on a a traveling trip, mm -hmm. a hiking trip, or anything like that. You might go with a CEO, but on that trip they're just a traveler, and they talk to you like a traveler, and you won't even know that they were a CEO until they tell you, and then you envision, oh, that's my boss. It isn't, but it's somebody like your mm -hmm. boss in another mm -hmm. company, mm -hmm. yet you're on a very equal footing mm -hmm. with them, and you see them just as equals. So I kind of envision that as how it would be uh, uh, under this. Uh, yes. Yeah. If it, people want a real idea of what that is, that's uh, yeah. something I've experienced and I think a lot of people can experience. And again, that's the whole concept. That's the whole ego, right? Which is basically this is an egoless, alive, thrive-based system. And, um, and to actually, uh, in the last show, Jared, um, the other guest that was on the show from uh, the Zeitgeist Movement, he had mentioned something about, um, well, you know, if everybody's created equal and everybody's making the same amount of money, you're gonna have like, doctors walking out. And, and then I think we went to commercials, so I never really got to address that. So if I may, I'd like to address that now. Um, if the doctors walk out, first of all, if the doctors walk out, then they were in it for the money anyway, which means they're probably not doing the best by the patient. Right? If, they're not, if they don't have their health and their well-being as their first priority, and money is the first priority, do you really want that person to be your doctor? Um, secondly, I, I think that a lot of doctors will still stay in their, um, in their position, but if they don't, if they, if they leave en masse, there are many people in this country who are doctors from other countries who cannot um, practice because they aren't able to um, write the tests or, or, or pass the qualifications for um, you know that are established by the Canadian government. So there's those people would be more than happy to fill in, in the gaps. So again, I think this would be a way. These would be the growing pains of the system. Uh, you know, so for anybody who wants to leave, there are plenty of people who are would be willing to um, take take those positions up and be in it for the right reasons. So then you know I think we would see the healthcare system move to a whole another level of of truly caring about the patient. And again, because there's no money to be made, it's not about you know hospital funding. It's not about the number of admissions you get and, and you know and, and equals the funding that a hospital gets kind of thing. So it wouldn't be based our, our the priority has completely changed now. It's now about the patient, it's about the wellness, and for the doctors who would leave, well, so, so what? Be it. There's, you know, there's, you can, you're replaceable, right? There's mm -hmm. a lot of people who can just move right in and take over. And the, the upside to this, the other up, or upside to this is now we will, have, because there's no money to be made, we will have opportunities to explore new health alternatives, things that are shunned now, the natural things, the homeopathy, the naturopathy, acupuncture, all these kinds of um, you know herbs and, and Chinese medicine, all these kinds of things that are, are um, kind of kiboshed, uh, you know, they will be the op given the opportunity to actually flourish now because it's not about suppressing them because there's no money to be made on them. Now it's about exploring what we can um, accomplish and perhaps in avoid invasive surgeries by using alternative health and energy type of healing. You know, it's same thing with oil, same thing with energy. You know, uh, now that it's not about, um, you know, making a profit off of each barrel of oil, now we can look to exploring new forms of energy and free energy, which some believe is already out there. You know, it's just being suppressed because, again, the haves want to continue to be the haves. Who wants free energy if you're a have, right? So all of these things will now start to be given the opportunity to actually flourish. And, um, and we will see a whole new society and a whole new uh, philosophy, a whole new attitude. And as a result, our health will grow. Our, our health will, will um, 
will expand, will become more energetic, and yada 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 yada. All of the, all the stuff will kind of roll out um, once you know. And there will be also community um, uh, and, and a we mentality versus an us versus them mentality because us versus them means ego means I have to have something at your expense. That's what the stock market is. Somebody makes money because somebody loses money, right? People get rich at the expense of the poor. Well, once you take all of that out, and there's no rich and there's no poor, there's just everything just is equal, right? Then you don't have all of, um, you know, the, the, the haves and the have-nots, basically, right? So, so. Um, okay. Now another, mm -hmm. another big type of question that comes up is uh, transparency. In a system like that, how do you, how do you keep people honest? Are they going to be honest by themselves? And if they are, um, well, transparency equals authenticity and integrity. They're they're all back to back. Um, and uh, again, um, y you know, the haves tend to, to encourage non-transparency because if everybody knew the truth, then there would be an uprising, as what's going on now. Um, so so. To have transparency would equal um, pretty much authenticity and integrity because, again, if everybody's create, created equal and everybody's making the same thing, what do you have to hide? So the system itself encourages transparency and encourages, like, like I was saying, the we mentality versus the us and them because us and them means I have something to hide. Mm. Right, so that that's non-transparency. Right, so having uh, transparency, it, it encourages it because nobody is created better than anybody else. And when I when we talk about you know the alive portion of this, all life is valued equally. Uh, what what we should be including in all of that is not just human life. I'm talking about any conscious living thing. So that means people, animals, plants, that means all things that have any level of consciousness. If it exists, if we can see it, sense it, taste it, feel it, if we can five sense it, okay, it has the right to not just survive, but to thrive. So that applies across the board to all conscious, all sentient, all living, and even non-living things. As long as it has any level of consciousness, then it applies to that. And that's the harmony in which we, we must, this, um, this movement, this initiative must grow from. It's, it's basically the statement would be, I want for myself, what I want, what I need for myself must, must equal what I would want and need for every other living thing on this planet. Everything. So what I want, what I need must equal what I would want or need for every other thing on that planet. So basically, on this planet. So basically putting myself in their shoes and saying, okay, what would I want if I were you? What would I need if I were you? That's the premise that we must come from. So that means no more suffering, no more abuse, um, no more oppression. Uh, no more, no more exploitation. None of that would exist in this new system. None of that can exist in this new system. No more suffering whatsoever at the hands of anybody else. And that means animals. That means plants. That means people. That means everything. Mm. This is like. Um, this is not well. This this is money related, but it's it's usually talked about in other areas. Whatever I do to somebody else, I do to myself. Yes. And this is the complete application of that in every way you can think of. Absolutely. Ab absolutely. Do unto others as you would have done to yourself, I think. Um, you know, that's, uh, I guess that would be the, 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 uh, the I am statement, basically, is, is intending for others what you would intend for yourself. And um, if we do that, if we truly desire this as a collective, and if we apply that simple statement to everything we do, then not, it, it will not go wrong. It cannot go wrong. That is universal law. It cannot go wrong. And it seems so simple. Hmm. But it is, it, it, it is, it actually is simple once we take away the ego and the whole concept of money system. That's what we live on right now is this concept of money. You know, and, and that's w where we have that, um, that 
non-transparency. That encourages non-transparency. That encourages competition. That encourages confrontation. That encourages war and bloodshed. Rather than, um, you know, rather than having that kind of mentality, okay, that transparency encourages, when, when everybody's created equal, that encourages a we mentality, okay, where instead of, you know, competition, we have cooperation. Instead of confrontation, we have collaboration. We have working together instead of working separate. You know, and then we will see a lot of the, um, uh, the borders uh, fall, a lot, I mean, ideologies and beliefs and the borders that surround those ideologies and beliefs. We'll see our ideas of religion change as a result of this. Mm-hmm. We'll see our ideas of um, culture change as a result of this. Uh, everything, this will have such a profound effect on civilization, on on people, and on our community, and, and then that will expand from you know from our personal life to our community life, to our city, to our country, and to the world. It will just keep expanding, and that is one of the reasons why I would encourage, even though people don't like their jobs, I would still encourage people to go to your job, even if you don't like it, even if you hate your boss or your colleagues, continue to go there because you will see the dynamics change within that small environment, and you will see how powerful this can be, and that will give you a personal example that you can actually relate to and that will give each person ideas as how they can apply that to other parts of their life to their family life to their community life to their um, city life to the provincial life to their con- you know country life and that kind of thing so I, that's that's another reason why it's a win-win and it's really important that people continue to live their life as is okay the way they do today just without with the one difference of now you're not earning anything. You are now going to work. It's not even going to be, you know, eventually it won't even be called work, but because our, our idea of it will change. Work tends to be, you know, laborious and drudgery. It won't feel like that anymore. And once, once, this, once this new philosophy and this new attitude starts to permeate that environment, but it's very important that people continue to go there and see the changes. They will see how powerful they are within a small community, small environment, that work environment. And then they can take that and use that, that, that empowerment to spawn creativity and change outside, within that environment, and take it beyond that environment. It, and this is part of how it will naturally grow and expand in ways that we can't even possibly measure at this point. And that is why to say, you know, to kind of say this is what's going to happen as a result of this and this is what's going to happen as a result of this is an impossibility. I wouldn't even begin to try to do that. Uh, but what I would say is, is take, let's go with this. And if our intention is everybody has, has everything they need, and there are no haves and have-nots. If everybody goes with that intention, we cannot go wrong. Watch things change, and we cannot go wrong. And just that alone, watch your health change. Just taking the worry of having to pay your bills, just that, okay? Well, all of a sudden, people will start to sleep more. A lot of people lose sleep because of that. They're in fear of their job. They're in fear they're going to get fired. They're in fear they're going to be laid off or what have. They're in fear they're not going to have enough money or security for their family. Watch that. Just that one single thing change everything. It's, it, that, that is going to be humongous. Mm. So uh, along the same lines, uh, hierarchy. Do we need it? And how would it look like? There, you know, we, we, what we, everybody will just be contributing. So there will, no be, there will not be a hierarchy because hierarchy suggests someone, um, at least in, in, in terms of the way we see hierarchy now, it means somebody has more, is more powerful in terms of money or status. Again, ego. Because this is ego-less, there is no ego. There would be no hierarchy in that sense. Yes, you will have experts. A, a doctor will be a doctor. A lawyer will be a lawyer. Okay, um, and that's an Indian chief will be an Indian chief. They have wisdom, they have experience, but they are not more important and they don't have more value because of it. They just have an interest or they just were trained in that, in that field. Okay, so let's let them, let's honor their expertise and use what they are um, expert in. They, you may, we may find some doctors say, you know, I went to doctor school because or medicine school because because I thought yada 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 I don't like it I want to change and they may become an incredible carpenter 
Mm -hmm. And then other people may go into medicine who never had the opportunity because they never had either had the money or they were born in their, you know, a country that didn't allow for that, that kind of opportunity. And so we will see a shifting of everybody moving to things that they really and truly desire as opposed to having to be there. You know, now they want the desire to be there. So, um, and that, that makes a huge difference. So in terms of hierarchy, no, there will, no be, there will not be any hierarchy the way we know it. There will, there will be expertise. And so people will be, you know, helping to um, create the system to implement um, a, a computer and electronic system so that everybody has funds. So people, whoever is good at software and, and creating and designing programs could do that, you know. But it wouldn't mean that they're better than a person who collects garbage. It just means that's where their training is. That's where they go. Do you see what I'm saying? So in that sense, no, no hierarchy at all. Just, just f uh, areas of expertise and areas of interest. Mm -hmm. But no one is m better than the other. A movie star is no better than the homeless person. Mm -hmm. So there would be sort of, I call them the organizers. Their job is to organize whatever's going on. Well, but that's all they do. They're not important. They're just organizers. They're just, that's all they do. That's all. They are just as important as somebody who is collecting the garbage. Let's, let's face it, we still need the garbage collected. We still need trucks to be driven right now to, to grocery stores to, to bring the food. You know? And there is a lot to be said for people who do drive trucks and people who do you know, pick up the garbage. And, and, um, and some people who, who create these programs may not want to. They may want to work, with, again, with their hands as opposed to their minds. And that may ch change. But yeah, there would be no difference to what an organizer is versus what um, uh, you know, a teacher is mm -hmm. you know, or, 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 or a nurse is. So, um I think this was answered already, but I'll okay. just throw another angle on it. If the hierarchy is changed like that, would there be any dissension? Would there be any, um, I guess, would there be anybody who wouldn't approve of it? And Only those who are still an ego. Only those who are still the haves. Any haves feel they have a lot to lose because mm -hmm. they've been a have at the expense of the have not. But will there be any dissension? If there is, it's all, any dissension is, is a, a flag of ego. So that can be an opportunity for them to transcend their ego. This is not to judge them. This is not to criticize them. This is not to say, you know, again, an us versus them mentality. A lot of people may not even realize they're in ego. A lot of people may think, you know, they're, we are so programmed to just be the way we are. We are such, um, we are so, routine we may not even realize it you know so this is an opportunity for them to realize wait a second yes I am an ego if this is bugging me then that means I must be an ego the truth is okay if you are not an ego if you if you are okay with everything being created equal then there will be no dissension so for anybody who has dissension that's a flag they're still an ego it's mm -hmm. that simple again it sounds really simple and it is it really is that simple so how did it get like this God Let's not even go there, but yeah. Well, speaking of simple, um, there's always people that say it's too simple and uh, it's not going to work because it's too simple. And it uh, kind of makes you wonder, but w what, what do you say to that? It's too simple. I, I would say, well, you know what? Is the system working now? This complicated system that we have, is it working? Ask, I would ask that specific person, is it working for you? And most people will say no. Uh, you know, it, it maybe even I've had people say, "Well, you know what? I'm I'm pretty happy in my life. I can't complain. I'm okay." Um, and 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 I and I would say, "Okay, you know, do you worry about paying the bills?" Yeah, I do, but I'm still okay. But you worry about paying the bills, so it, and they would say, "Yeah, of course I do. Everybody does. You always worry about your job. You always do." You always worry that's not, especially now, especially in the economic times that we're in now. So, um, so I, would, I, I said to them, okay, if you didn't have to worry about that, wouldn't that be a step up? Mm -hmm. And every single time, every single time, they said yes. So then, isn't it worth trying? And the other thing is, even if you are happy in your microscopic part of the world, when you look at the people starving in other parts of the world. Do you cringe at all when you look at that? 
when you look at those starving ki kids, do you cringe at all? When you look even at, at homeless people on the streets, do you cringe at all? If there is even a flinch, that means you're not totally happy. And I cannot believe that there's one person on this planet that would not cringe when they see that. And if we can create a system that eradicates that at no expense to us, to, that would not affect you personally, in fact, might improve your life personally, personally. Do you have anything to lose? If it can get better, if it can only go, get better for you in your personal life and then better across the world, do you have anything to lose? Mm. Th that's what I say to those people. And usually they come around. Yeah. How can you not? Mm. The only people who wouldn't would be the extreme elite. And those are the people who are intentionally oppressing. Mm -hmm. And those people will be called out through this system. Those people will, it will become very apparent. Over time, it will, and over a short period of time, it will become very apparent who those mm -hmm. people are. And those people have a choice. At that point, they will have a choice. They either join in, okay, or go about doing their thing. It's not like, again, it's not like we, you know, it's, it's not about confrontation. You know, if, that we can function very well without those people. We, once we take back our, our power, once we step into this system, those people will not have a choice. They will have to join in or go off on some little island somewhere and create something else. Mm -hmm. It's not about forcing, it's not about war, it's, not, it's completely peaceful, it's a, 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 you know, a yes and approach as opposed to a no but. It's including everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think even those people who are the elitist, you know, once you drop the ego and you realize that, you know what, it's okay to be like everybody else, there, you realize certain parts of yourself and uh, you are free to explore who you truly are and you, you get to, to expand in ways that you never even thought possible. So I think it, those people, once they can drop that, that ego, will see, uh, will see a whole other side of themselves flourish that they may appreciate even more than the life they've been living. Because I know, I know people who have had these kind of personal awakenings and have come from those powerful positions and, and said, you know, if I only knew, if I only knew. So this gives us all the opportunity to only know. Hmm. Okay. Our time is almost up, so... Do you want to give any contact information? Yeah. Again, if anybody has any questions about how, um, how this relates to Marxism or communism or democracy, as we were talking off the top of the show, um, send me an email, shift into one, S-H-I-F-T-I-N-T-O-O-N-E at hotmail.com. I'll be happy to answer any questions or comments that you might have. Again, this is about... Um, moving forward and, and not really focusing on anything of the past. If it worked, we wouldn't be where we are. <laughs> so, but it is our tendency to want to label things and put things into a box. So if, if people need to understand it in the term, in, in, from a frame of reference from where they are, then let me know what that frame of reference is and, and, and I will explain the best I can as to how um, that can adapt to this. Okay. This is truly a win-win. There is, it's a, it's an absolute win-win for every single thing on this planet. It, it, if every, if we want this, it can't not work. If we want for everybody else what we want for ourselves, it can't not work. It's, it's, it's foolproof, fail-proof, guaranteed, one hundred percent, guaranteed, money back guarantee. <laughs> Guarantees. Since there's no money. <laughs> on most money shows, you don't hear the word guarantee. So this is, no, this is one of the few times. Well, it's probably a bad word on a money show. Generally it is, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, okay. So thanks for, co for coming out. Thank and, you. Uh, Thank you for having me back. So uh, that's our show for tonight. Um, you can watch the show on thatchannel.com. The regular time is the third Tuesday of the month, 6 to 7 p.m. And uh, I have it on my archives as well uh, on my website, www.jolieinvestor.ca. And you can watch that at any time. And um, to contact me, my email is jolieinvestor.today at gmail.com. And I've gave, given my website, and I'm also on Twitter at jolieinvestor and on LinkedIn. I also have started a blog, which you can also access on my website. And uh, 
that's it for today, so thanks for watching. Have a good evening.
Time again, uh, all the good times again. Started as a simple friend in the sun, on the beach, and in the bed. Uh, with a pretty Cinderella face. If trouble ever had a name, uh, girl, you were the best of it. When you need, I always got you out of it. Uh, remember when we went away? The beaches and the ocean spray. When you fell and hurt your back, there I was, make you smile, forget your pain. Often on we arguing, never knew how it began, but always knew how it would end. You wave your hand, and underneath the spell again. It's like magic, it's just like magic, it's just like magic, it's just like magic. I would make you wait. <laughs> Seems just like a storybook. All the summer parts we took. I'll never page another chance. Just keep it big, just keep it big. It's like magic, it's like magic. It's like magic. It's like magic. It's like magic. Come true. 